Okay, so this was, um, this was the series, right, that we were con contemplating. Now, what I want to do, as you've seen before in this topic, I want to think about a way to visualize what this looks like and to do it in successive steps. So here's the way I've chosen to go about it. Do you agree that this is a way of just visualizing a quarter? Yes. Are you okay with that? Taking a square, halve it, halve it. The whole square, if that's a quarter, what's the whole square? Uh, a, whole. A, a whole unit, right? So it'd be one times one, okay? So let's try and understand what's going on here. Now, this is only the first term in the series. What would the next term look like? How do we visualize? It's a sixteenth, isn't it? I covered it up, sorry about that. Yeah. How do I visualize a sixteenth? What do you think, Mo? One fourth of one fourth. So I've got many fourths, quarters to choose from here. But in order to get a pattern sort of set up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this quarter, I'm going to take it up into this corner over here. Okay, are you with me so far? So this is just the first two terms in our partial sum. Okay, now once I realize I've got this pattern set up, if I want to continue, the next one's one over 64. Well, if this is a quarter of a quarter, then 1 over 64 is a quarter of a quarter of a quarter, right? So in other words, I can just sort of keep on going. There's 1 over 64. Now, hopefully you can see the limiting sum is kind of forming before your eyes. I just need to continue the pattern, right? And just sort of go further and further and further. And it, at a certain point, um, I got too lazy and couldn't animate them anymore. So <laughs> what are we looking at here? And how can we make sense of the number, the answer you came up with? Well, do you notice, um, by the way, this shape is called a fractal. It's sort of the same shape, sort of copied over and over again, sort of going off into infinity. Do you agree? Now, in particular, I want you to notice each yellow square, each yellow square, it sort of has two corresponding squares that are the same size. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like every yellow square has two other squares that are the same size, every single way all the way along. Right? So the question is, like the sum of this GP, the limiting sum is, what's yellow? That's the question, right? But for every yellow part, there's two other parts that aren't yellow. Does that make sense? So that's a third of this part, that's a third of this part, and a third, and a third, and a third. <laughs> Are you getting a sense for why we should actually have expected one third all the way from the beginning? Does that make sense? So if you want, I'm going to disappear in a second, but you may like to draw this, right? That's just a visual representation of the limiting sum that you just calculated, okay? All right, now, while you are doing that, I'll give you a second. We can get the lights again now. Um, I want to see if you can take this and apply it to a, a thing that you learned like four or five years ago. And I'm just going to sneak it over here so that I don't have to put the screen up just yet. Um, as you can see on this outline, I want us to see if we can take this idea of a limiting sum and apply it to this. What do we call these guys when you've got a decimal that repeats over and over again? A recurring decimal. In fact, spoilers, I wrote it on the board right above there. This is a recurring decimal. We can express this recurring decimal as a limiting sum. Have you, any of you in the homework had a look at a question like this? Hmm. All right, in that case, I'm going to pause. And I want you to jot down this particular recurring decimal, 0. 373737, etc. Um, if you're lazy, you can write as 0 0.37 with the dots above the 3 and the 7. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of time first before we unpack it for you. How might you express this, for starters, as a geometric progression at all? It looks like just a number, right? How might we express this as a series? And then secondly, how can we identify the limiting sum that's inside it? So have a think, see how far you can get, okay? Let's unpack this. Now, I said this to Saran before and I'll repeat it to everyone. I apologize that this starts off sounding vague. It's hard to explain this in like a, with, a, with a clue without just giving away the question entirely. So that is what I'm about to do. I'm going to give away the question entirely, okay? Now, here's what I want you to remember. And I've left this series over here so that we can kind of make it a bit more obvious, right? What you've got is a bunch of terms that each get successively smaller. And I've sort of highlighted here with different colors, you've got terms here that even though they're written as one number, I can write them separately and show that they get smaller and smaller and smaller. So let's just look at the first part, okay? If we just said 0 0.37, as a fraction, how would you write that? 37 over 100, right? 37 over 100. Now, 
If I were then to say take the next part of the number, it's tricky because decimals sort of mush everything together. But what you've really got here in the next instance is 0037. Do you see that? If I were to write that red part just on its own, how would I write that as a fraction? And you're still thinking in decimals, right? How do I do this? 37 over how much? How many zeros? Oh. It's gonna be it's gonna be four zeros, which is ten thousand, right? Now I could write thirty-seven over ten thousand, but instead I'm gonna write it as one hundred squared. Okay. Now why is that helpful to me? Well, even though ten uh, sorry ten thousand is a hundred squared, I'm trying to pull out the fact that there's a common ratio from one term to the next. All right, one last one. Let's have a look just here. The third one that I've got, and we always go to three when we're trying to establish a pattern, right? Is um four zeros and then comes the three seven, right? So how do I write this guy as a fraction? 37 over 100 cubed. And you can check it has the right number of zeros. You can pop that into your calculator to confirm if you like. So now I've set it all up. I've got an A. I'm going to need a fraction on a fraction here. I'm going to need to identify what my R is, but hopefully I've written the successive fractions in a way that makes it reasonably clear. How do I multiply to get from one turn to the next? Hmm. Do I square it? Is, is this squared from this? Is, is there square roots going in any direction? Hmm. Well, what does 100 squared mean anyway? It means 100 times 100. Yeah, that's right. Two decimal points smaller, so I have to multiply by to make it 100 times smaller, right? And then I have to multiply to make it 100 times smaller again. That's why it's 100 cubed. Are you with me? Yeah. So therefore, the ratio should be 1 over 100, because that's how much smaller I'm making it every single time. Okay, and now we're sort of at this point, aren't we? We just need to carry out the arithmetic. Ishan, do you have a question or a thought? n to the 1, uh, 100, 100 to the power of n plus 1. So if I was trying to work out what the nth term is, I would say it'd be a times r to the power of n minus 1, exactly like you said. But in this case, I'm actually not trying to work out the nth term. I'm trying to work out the sum of all the terms, hence limiting sum. Yeah. So let's go ahead and tidy this up. There's our numerator. What do I get on the denominator? 1 take away 1 over 100. Come on guys, I know, it's, I know it's warm and your brain's overheating, but you guys can manage this guy for me. This is 99 over 100, thank you. By the way, why am I writing so many unnecessary brackets? Yeah, because I know I'm going to misread my own fractions, right? And fractions on fractions, you're asking to be uh, making mistakes. What can I cancel? The 100 here and the 100 here. And this is a result you may recall all the way back from year 7. You're like, oh, I can get given a recurring decimal. You're like, ah, oh, okay, this is, this is what we all knew about, but it took us four and a half years to get you to the point where you understood the theory as to why. We needed limits and other fancy stuff. Okay, is this making sense? Are you with me? All right, so there's our application as a recurring decimal.